this video, you will learn how to use your coordinate geometry skills in order to partition a line segment. So first of all, what does it mean to partition a line segment? Well, I want you to think back to midpoint. Midpoint divided a line segment into two equal parts. And just like a midpoint divided a line segment into parts, partitioning also means to divide up a line segment into pieces. Whereas the parts for the midpoint were equal pieces, the parts for partitioning are typically in some given specific ratio. So you may want to add the word ratio here where it talks about partitioning. Here's what I'm talking about if I think about looking at this in a picture form. If I divide that line segment up into five different equal pieces, we might say that the ratio between the purple line segment and the blue line segment, we might say those are in the ratio 2 to 3. So I've partitioned that whole entire line segment up into two pieces such, such that their ratio is 2 to 3. So that would, that's what it means to partition a line segment. Directed line segment, this is, sounds like a complicated concept and really isn't. A directed line segment has a starting endpoint and an ending endpoint. So for instance, directed line segment AB is going to have point A as a starting point and point B as an ending point. That's all it means to be a directed line segment. Let's go ahead and jump into some of these partitioning problems. In number one, it says line segment AB has endpoints A with coordinates 3, 4 and B with coordinates 6, 10. Find the coordinates of point P along that directed line segment starting at A and ending at B such that the ratio between pieces AP and PB is 1 to 2. So the first thing that I'm going to do is draw a picture of this and plot those points so that I have a good visual understanding of exactly what's going on in this question. So there are points A and B. I'm going to go ahead and grab my straight edge and use my ruler in order to connect those guys. Now, if I'm interested in dividing these up into a ratio of 1 to 2, that means that ultimately I've got to have or divide it into three equal parts. So I'm going to think about dividing this line segment up into three equal parts. And in order to do that, I'm going to look at two things. I'm going to look at the horizontal component of that line segment, which I just drew in the graph in green. And I'm going to look at the vertical component of that line segment, which just I just sketched on the graph in blue. Now the horizontal component, the line segment, or the green line segment, is exactly three units long. The vertical component of that line segment is six units. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each, and each of those, I'm going to take the horizontal component, and we said that that horizontal component is exactly three units long, and we want to divide that up into three equal parts. And likewise, the vertical component of that line segment is six units long, and we also want to divide that into three equal parts, making each piece two units. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at either one of the endpoints, and I'm going to move left or right one, up or down two. I'm going to start at point A and move to the right one and up two. And if I do that correctly, I should still end up on line segment AB. Move to the right one, up two, and again, if done correctly, I should end up on line segment AB. Move to the right one and up two, and I end up exactly at B. So I know that I've divided that line segment up into three equal parts. I have some good feel or some feeling good about how I've done that. And if I look at the picture, the picture looks pretty good too. I've divided that up into three equal parts. Now I have to decide which red point to put point B on, sorry, point P, such that the ratio is 1 to 2. Well, if I think about what's going on in this question and I draw a little sketch over here, if this is A and this is B, I want the ratio between AP and PB to be 1 to 2. Or in other words, I want the distance from A to P to be half as long is the distance from P to B. Or you might say the distance from P to B to be double as long as A to P. Two different ways of saying the same thing. But it, in essence, I want point P to be closer to point A 
than it is to point B. So this red dot here is going to be my point P. So if I'm going to describe exactly how I got there, I started at point A, I moved to the right one, and up to, I ended at point P, and from the graph, point P has coordinates. Four, six. So that was a nice example where there weren't any fractions or decimals. It's pretty straightforward. Let's go take a look at one that's going to give us a little bit more of a challenge now and does involve some fractions and decimals. It's still the same idea though, same exact idea. So line segment AB with the given endpoints, and there's actually a couple typos in this problem. This should say point B. And it should ask us or direct us to find the coordinates of point P along that directed line segment in such a way that the ratio between AP and PB is 2 to 3. So I'm going to go ahead and start this one exactly the same way I started the first one, and then I'm going to go ahead and start or begin by plotting my points. So there's point A. There's point B. I'll grab my straight edge and draw that line right in there. And again, I'm going to think about this as having a horizontal component of 1, which I just sketched in there in purple, and a vertical component of 6, which I just sketched in there in blue. Now, because I'm dividing these into two pieces such that their ratio is 2 to 3, I want to actually split this up into five equal parts. All right, so I want to take that horizontal piece, and I'm going to explain to the person reading my paper that, yep, I'm dealing with the horizontal piece here. The horizontal piece was one unit long. I'm going to divide that up into five equal pieces. And each one of those pieces, then, is going to be a fifth of a unit, or if you prefer decimals, two-tenths of a unit. And then I'm going to look at the vertical component, which is six units long. That, too, I want to divide up or split up into five equal pieces. So each one of those pieces is going to be six-fifths of a unit long, or if I prefer the decimal, 1.2 units. Here's when things start to become a little bit tricky, because now I need to go on to this graph, and I need to use or I need to move by 0.2 and 1.2. So I'm going to go ahead and do my best to do this, but it's going to get a little sloppy and a little messy. So I'm going to move to the right, 0.2, move up 1.2, to the right, 0.2, up 1.2, to the right, 0.2, up 1.2, to the right, 0.2, up 1.2, to the right, 2, up 1.2. And I've, in essence, split that line segment into five equal parts. I want AP to be the smaller of the two pieces. So if I go look at this graph right here, I want AP to be worth 2, and I want P to B to be worth 3. So point P, let me see if I can find a different color here, point P is going to be that point on my graph right there. And because that's kind of sort of out in no man's land, I have to figure out exactly how I can acquire or find the coordinates for point P. Well, I'm going to think about where I started. I started here at point B. And from point B, I moved to the right three times to get to point P. And each one of those three jumps had point two units in it. So my X coordinate for point B started out to be five. And I did added 0.2 to that three different times. So where I end up with my coordinate or my x value for my coordinate for point B is 5.6. If I started at point B for the y values, the y starting place was a 4. And each time I moved, I moved up 1.2. So plus 1.2, plus 1.2, 
plus 1.2, where I ended up with then is 7.6. So the x value for the coordinate of point P was 5.6, the y value 7.6. If you want to get fancy, you could have started at point A and moved two, point 0.2 units to the left twice or subtracted point 0.2 units twice from the x-coordinate in point A and subtracted 1.2 twice from the y-coordinate. It'll end you up or get you to the same spot. That one I think is a little tricky. It's a little dicey just because of the decimals and the fractions. Nothing that you're going to look at on the next page has any decimals or has any fractions that are associated with it. I do want you to take a few minutes and summarize in your own words exactly what's important about this video and then see if you can take a look at number two and number three. If those two give you trouble, you want to come back and look at example one because both of those are very similar to example one in that neither of them deals with fractions in videos. All right, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and stop. If you have questions, you can write them down so that you'll remember to uh, ask when you come back to class, or you can always email me with those questions as well. And as always, thank you for the gift of your time uh, in watching the video.